in that food that one is consuming, then one manifests with a, an outlook of a good nutrition. Now, in terms of uh, manifestations of inadequate nutrition or bad nutrition, usually there is a lack mm -hmm. of those components. Carbohydrates usually is available in large numbers. Protein is sometimes an issue, whether you're getting from plant origin or from animal origin. Uh, fats, they're good fats and they're bad fats, depending on how they're prepared and the source. Uh, and of course, the area that normally has a big issue is the issue of minerals that come from the nutrients. If you have what we call trace elements like magnesium, iron, zinc, uh, selenium, these components, when there's a deficiency of these minerals, small amounts that come from the soil, then increasingly we then see people manifesting with either malnutrition, uh, of course, those are reduced protein, or with other deficiencies, especially related to what we call non-communicable diseases, like the diabetes, the hypertension, and the cancers. And of course, as I said earlier on, for some people, because of this imbalance, they manifest the consumption of more carbohydrates with obesity. That's weight gain, and then they become uh, overweight, and then from overweight, they indeed proceed to being obese. And when they are obese, there is an element of what we call an imbalance from taking the wrong diet, then they oftentimes manifest with uh, other diseases that we call non-communicable diseases, like the diabetes, the blood pressures, the cancers, and many others. So for children, mostly their kind of malnutrition is where they lack mostly protein, uh, and they manifest okay. with malnutrition or, or protein lack. But we are seeing more and more, uh, uh, Hillary, that the bigger issue yes. right now, almost double, is the issue of these children not only having less or consuming more carbohydrates, but also lacking these, mm -hmm. these minerals, these nutrients. So you find that children are not only malnourished in terms of uh, weight and height, but they're also manifesting, unfortunately, with diseases of non-communicable diseases, like diabetes at an age of before, below 10. So it's becoming more and more complex with the new generation. The challenges are bigger, and, and we need to create more awareness so that uh, they are aware on how to uh, shift back to healthy foods. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, thank you. Now, uh, when COVID-19 came, there were so many myths around uh, what could cure it, including uh, some lemons, uh, we were told, and some concussion of ginger and oral view. Since it was believed to be some common cold, then to, uh, that it, um, translates to being the uh, pneumonia or extreme pneumonia. And people uh, tried really so much to to dwell on warm water and uh, lemon, uh, making the lemons now to increase their prices. And now, at the same breath, we have seen uh, the Ministry of Health trying to come up with some guidelines in for the nutrition. Now, speaking of COVID-19 and, and uh, the nutrition that we should be having, what really do we need? Is it what we're being told by... Uh, people on social media, now that you're a doctor, please uh, tell us what we should be eating to prevent us uh, from maybe getting COVID-19 or to help us fight COVID-19 for that case. Thank you, Hilary. Very, very pertinent, very pregnant question. I will try and be as clear and as simple as I can be. Firstly, the, there is no such thing as a cure uh, for COVID-19, because COVID-19 is a viral disease of the respiratory system, as you have said correctly, that is in the family of flus. So yes, I can say emphatically that COVID-19 is a flu. It is nothing else other than a flu. Let's get that very clear. The only difference is that COVID-19 is a more severe form of flu virus. That's why COVID-19 actually is coronavirus disease of the year. So the word COVID-19 is an acronym for coronavirus disease that occurred in the year 2019, and hence COVID-19, all in the Having said that, uh, one key ingredient that all viruses, as we know, respond to is a strong and robust immune system. We can therefore provide certain supportive foods and nutrients that can help improve or boost or enhance one's natural defense systems. 
aka the immune system. So COVID-19, good people, please understand, has everything to do with whether your immune system is, is functioning at optimum level. If your immune system is functioning at optimum level, even if you get an infection of COVID-19, the likelihood of you having very minimal effects, in fact, that's what we call asymptomatic carriers, is what's manifesting. And you can see most of those who get infected recover, often because the immune system is up to date. Now, what makes this immune system up to date? This is where the lemons come in because they have high levels of vitamin C. This is where other fruits that have high vitamin C come in, not just lemons, but also lime, oranges, mangoes, most fruits have vitamin C, guavas, moringa. Moringa is one plant, uh, one uh, uh, has actually more than uh, almost five times the amount of uh, vitamin C than lemon. But you know, it is true. It's not a fad. It's not, it's not a fallacy. Yes, the lemon is because of vitamin C, uh, but also the other components that come in in what is eaten. The garlic, some people are mixing the lemon with garlic. What is in garlic? Garlic has powerful antiviral and viral killing properties. So the combination of lemon, garlic, ginger also is part of that combination. What is in ginger? Ginger is a strong, powerful immune modulator. It regulates and brings into balance the immune system. As you can see, all these have an effect towards that direction. Then sometimes people mix with turmeric, the red um, tuber that's grown. Turmeric is a, a strong antioxidant and, uh, and uh, anti-inflammatory. When you get any any infection, including viral infections, there is inflammation in your body system trying to fight the enemy, and as a result, causes swelling, pain, and discomfort. So turmeric comes in, and then finally, some people add honey to taste. Honey is a powerful antiviral, antibacterial, and indeed also uh, supports the immune system. So when a combination of these foods are consumed together with uh, uh, certain foods that contain high amounts of zinc, like pumpkin, pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds. Uh, well, zinc is also available in meat, you know, in yama uh, depending on the quality of the yama again, uh, and in cheese and other dairy products. So uh, this combination, good people, is not a fallacy. This is what we call supportive therapy that helps the body build its own immune system by giving it nutrients. As I said, these components are nutrients that help to improve, in some cases, boost the immune system, such that when the virus comes into your system, it finds a system that's ready to fight and reduce the effects of COVID-19. So I can say very emphatically that yes, 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 those foods are not a fallacy. People are not stupid. The reason why they take the lemons a lot is because those who have taken those concussions, of course, with a lot of rehydration, have seen themselves improving and having less severe symptoms of COVID-19. And just to clarify on live TV, uh, when you get infected with a, a, a virus or a bacterium, a body, it's how your body responds that determines whether you're going to get sick or not. So you can have a virus in your body, which we call an infection, and not have any symptoms of disease. This is why most right. Kenyans who have been found to be COVID positive didn't even know themselves. They didn't have a cough, they don't have a flu, and if they did, they're very mild symptoms. Yeah, so we call them asymptomatic, even most of them recover, like any flu. Because as I said earlier on, COVID-19 is a flu. Uh, and of course, unfortunately, for those whose immune system is weak, from diseases like diabetes, blood pressure, cancer, and so on, which you call comorbidities, then they have a higher chance of COVID changing from an infection to a disease. That's very key. To convert from a disease, right. which is just positive, to an, in, uh, I mean, from an infection to a disease condition. And then, of course, a few of them, unfortunately, progress on to have severe disease and they die. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Doctor, for clarifying. Uh, less than a minute. Uh, I would like you, in, a, in the same breath, uh, give us the challenges. Uh, mention just one challenge that you have been facing in trying to advocate or to create awareness in terms of uh, the nutrition, how people should be feeding, and maybe the possible solution to the challenges that you have faced at the same time giving us your final recommendations as we wind up. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Hilary. Thank you very much indeed. I wish I had more time, but let me put it this way. Uh, the key challenges are that we, for a long time, for some reason, we have been given this impression that the so-called modern food, the cakes, the high sugar, the high salt, the mandazis, the chapatis, the products, basically what I call processed food, is a better food. It has been associated with class, the middle class. They eat at the Javas, they eat the pizzas, they eat at the McDonald's, they eat at the KFCs. This is wrong, wrong, wrong. Because the foods we are consuming often don't have those ingredients I mentioned. The high vitamin Cs, the high vitamin D, the high iron and zinc that are supportive of a healthier and more immune boosting system. That's the biggest challenge. The younger people, especially, they think it's vogue, they think it's trendy to eat those kind of foods. And as you said, this is clearly why we see a high rising rate of not only infectious diseases, but especially non-communicable diseases, which when they increase, of course, with obesity, then the chance of one getting COVID-19 and succumbing are much higher. Solution going forward, I'll put it this way. Let's eat like our grandparents eat. Let's eat the way nature initially meant us to eat. A ratio of 80-20, 80% of what you consume, keep it green, keep it veggies. If possible, take food that's organic, meaning that does not have chemicals, agrochemicals, synthetic agrochemicals. How can you find this food? It's mostly the food that grew in the rural areas. Shakula, Yawatu, Maskimi, Mboga, Zaina, Balimbali, not just cabbage, but including green, leafy vegetables, because they have all those nutrients, saga, managus, tereres, the tubers like lumas, tick the herbals like turmeric, ginger, yes, and yes, they boost your immune system, they support your immune system, and then, of course, mix with 20% of some yama, kidogo, uh, some nutrients are not found easily in vegetables, yeah, but make sure that keep it as natural as possible. Some yam has antibiotic, cuckoo, go kienyeji, avoid the, the, the broilers and the, even the eggs, eat the kienyeji eggs. The food, in summary, that was like what our grandparents, our grandfathers, and our grandmothers ate. That food was rich, was balanced, and was in tandem with nature, as opposed to the now highly processed, sugary, salt-loaded, and very much carbohydrate-driven foods especially the young generation. So in summary, there is hope, the cheaper food, the green food, more um, uh, rehydration and more supply. And of course, uh, move around. We are homo, homo uh, habilis. We are designed to move. In, in addition to that nutrition, there is need for us to get out of our seats, not become uh, potato coaches, uh, and, and move around, go outside, get the sun. The sun triggers the production of vitamin D, very, very important. And I think the ministry has also alluded to this. I think last time I listened to uh, Dr. Rashid Aman, the cast of the Ministry of Health, he said there is a huge component of nutritional support for COVID-19. And this is 100%. This is not some mockery. It is evidential. It is proven. It is effective. It can actually serve as medicine. So summary, good food is medicine, bad food is poison. So eat more. Right, thank you so much. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Mother Day, uh, when you will have good time for us to discuss all these things uh, pertaining good health. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and uh, trying to bring some light as far as nutrition is of concern. Apparently, we are out of time, but we will be inviting you sometimes later. Uh, we were talking about nutrition uh, with Dr. Peter Mokaya. He's the director, founder director of Organic Consumer Alliance, OCA, and uh, the theme or the word is let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food nutrition is all you need and he has clarified that the concussion that we are having the ginger the garlic and the uh, lemon they will not cure COVID-19 they will only help you boost your immune system not to cure COVID-19 so uh, be informed and thank you so much for keeping us company see you again later my name is Dereva Hillary have yourself a good day goodbye <laughs>